Addicted to Apple, shoppers queuing outside the Apple store on Regent Street on the launch day of the new iPad, although some had been waiting longer than others. 27 hours and you've been here um, since Wednesday, uh, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. We're on our honeymoon, so this is the first thing we're doing on our honeymoon, trying to get an iPad. It's something different from Apple, isn't it? Something uh, different uh, to other phones. I think it's a very, very nice technology they are giving to us. For me, personally, it's not really Apple as such, it's just like having a laugh with these guys because I've met these guys in yeah, different launches and before Apple, aren't you? we have a good laugh and make some money out of like selling spaces like two of the young lads at the front, they sold their space for 300 quid each. On this occasion the level of crowd certainly didn't exceed the store's expectations but nevertheless the Apple induced mania was still palpable. Hannah Buckley is editor of the mobile tech news and review site Recombu. I asked her what she thought caused this Apple mania. The way Apple functions as a company, they're very secretive. You don't see leaks from like foreign foreign areas, and so when the product comes, there's a genuine element of surprise. And Apple sort of they play to that. Apple sort of I think I like that element about themselves. Um, I think also in terms of the technology, um, the, the first iPad sort of broke new ground and it sold like thousands and thousands and created like a brand new genre. So there's always an expectation that Apple will be developing a new a new some like new type of technology or a new breakthrough product or something that something that different that hasn't been done before. And Apple aren't the only big brand launching a major sales offensive this week. Coffee chain Starbucks's latest campaign, launched a few days ago with the morning of free lattes for all, is designed to personalise the in-store experience. From now on, we won't refer to you as a latte or a mocha but instead as your folks intended, by your name. Obviously Starbucks' new cup naming promise helps match coffee to customer, but that's not the only advantage for the chain. What they're doing, they're making it special. They're making that small cup of coffee unique to you and special to you. And if you can do that with a homogenous product, you're going to make your customers feel special, you're going to get them coming back time after time after time. And while a cup of coffee may not cost nearly as much as an iPad, it's still got the potential to hit customers hard in the wallet. Research carried out last year found that a heavy coffee drinker will spend as much as £2,000 every year in coffee shops, consuming an average of 21 cups every week. Even average coffee drinkers will spend over £450 each year, picking up between six and eight cups between Monday and Friday. And among the loyalists of the coffee chain devotees are the Starbucks drinkers. People want to sit in, in a Starbucks, not just for five minutes to have a cup of coffee, but for half an hour, an hour to read the paper, log on to their uh, email and, and do some work, probably on their um, portable Mac or their iPhone or using their iPod. And as for their brand, well, it's all about their brand because let's face it, their coffee is no big deal. But what they've managed to do is to make going out for a cup of coffee into a fresh experience. And ultimately, that's what massive brands like Apple or Starbucks do. Turn products into feelings and shops into living, breathing commercial theatres. But it's when you throw the money it costs to be part of these brands into the equation that it really starts to get dangerous for the consumer.